ज्ञानकोश पुराणास इंट्रोडक्शन सर्गच्च प्रतिसर्गच्च वंशो मन्वंतराण च वंशानुचरितं चैव पुराणं पञ्चलक्षणं विष्णु पुराण पार्ट 5 लिफ्टिंग ऑफ गोवर्धन पराशर सेड One day Balarama and Krishna saw that many delicious kind of sweet meats were being cooked at home with curiosity and politeness they asked Nanda and other elders father which festival are you preparing for which god will be worshiped what purpose will such worship serve Nanda Baba explained sons Devraj Indra is the god of clouds it is because of indra's grace that we get rain so these materials are being prepared to worship indra krishna said father every creature in the world enjoys comforts or suffers as per his fate none of the gods can change the results action is primary in the world one gets the results as per his action Even Indra is God as a result of his action. Anyone who performs one hundred Ashwamedha yagas becomes Indra. But even after performing crores of Ashwamedha yagas, one cannot stay in Vraj. It is the duty of Indra to cause rain. So it will rain even if you don't worship Indra. But to feed the poor and satisfy them with clothes and other gifts is real worship. by their blessing we shall be happier i desire that with all these materials we should worship giriraj govardhan and distribute the prasad among the poor with which their souls will be satisfied and will have the grace of god thus lord krishna told his father that all the people should worship unitedly and uh, unitedly they should receive prasad If you are ready to do as per my desire it's all right otherwise i will not worship your haughty god not receive his prasad worship of govardhan and indignation of indra thus convinced by kanaiya's wise reasoning all the gopas agreed to him nand baba said oh krishna we are making all this preparation for you only and we will do as you say we will worship govardhan for us govardhan is also like a god it gives us grass water and fuel which are necessary for our lives thus with the lord's consent they dropped their plan to worship indra and resolved to worship govardhan faithfully on the purnima day in the month of kartik all the gopas gathered near mount govardhan During the night of all them circumambulated the mountain lord invoked the ganges by his wish and bathed govardhan with her water then they put vermilion on it offered basil leaves flowers and worshiped it brahmins recited hymns in its praise to make the people believe in their rituals lord krishna himself appeared on the mountain in huge form and exclaimed i am giriraj the king of the mountain and began to eat the offering but as a child he was still among the villagers who faithfully bowed before the mountain among them the child krishna said look what a surprise giriraj has appeared himself and bestowed his grace on us he has accepted our worship thereafter all the gopas distributed prasad among themselves and felt supremely satisfied when indra learned that the gopas had stopped worshiping he grew outrageous in anger he ordered the clouds to rain torrentially over vraj and cause heavy flood in vraj region in no time dense clouds gathered over vraj soon the it was lightning thunder darkness and storm all all around 
Then it began to rain torrentially. All the people took refuge at Lord Krishna's and prayed him to save them from the anger of Indra. Lord Krishna said, those who regard me as their or mine and I am theirs. So there is no need to worry for you. Saying this, Lord lifted Giriraj on his little finger and called all the people of Raj along with their cattle under the lee of Govardhan. Then he ordered his wheel, Sudarshan, to absorb the water of the cloud so that not even a single drop could fall on earth. Thus for seven days continuously Lord balanced Govardhan on the little finger. Thus Lord Krishna also came to be known as Giridhari. People who had gathered around him just kept on seeing Lord's moon-like face and hence did not feel thirsty or hungry. In fact, the comforts those people got during those seven days were beyond verbal description. Lord held Govardhan on one hand and Conch on, on the other, while with the remaining two hands he began to play his flute. Hearing the tunes of his flute, all the people of Raj began to dance. With joy after the rain stopped, all of them returned to their home. When Indra learnt about the happening in Raj, he soon realized his mistake. Indra himself reached Raj and begged Lord for his pardon. Then he gave Lord a ceremonial bath with the milk of Surabhi. For protecting the cows, the Lord also got one more name, Govind. Ras Leela Prasha related to Maitreya the tale of Kamadev's humiliation. The purpose of describing this tale is just that common people should reflect on the selfless love of gopis for Lord Krishna and experience the love of God for them as well. After conquering Brahma and other gods, ego of Kamadeva had surged to great heights. He therefore requested God to quench his thirst for war. God invited Kamadev to visit Vrindavana on the night of Sharat Purnima in the season that precedes winter and told him that on that divine night he would enjoy the company of crores of gopis. If I have slightest passion for any of them, you will win, otherwise you will lose. That night Lord Krishna added more divinity, more brilliance to it with the resolution of Ras with the help of Yogamaya. It was a perfect night for the purpose. Flowers bloomed in Vrindavana. Full moon shone and gentle, cool breeze blew from the banks of river Yamuna. Amidst his st stimulating ambience, Lord Krishna began to play an enchanting tune on his flute. The tune attracted gopis, their passion surged to its zenith and under the influence of love for Lord Krishna and as if in trance, all of them ran to meet their beloved Kanaya, leaving all their fear bondage, passions, and shyness behind. Some of them were intercepted by their husbands and dragged back to home, but only their physical bodies stayed put their souls reach Vrindavana. In Vrindavana on the bank of Yamuna, gopis saw Vrindavan Vihari near their familiar Kadamba tree. Yogamaya adorned all the gopis from tip to toe. In fact, those gopis were not ordinary women. Maitreya asked, gopis had not regarded Krishna as uh, Parabrahma. What was the basis for their passion then? Parashar said, when a wretched person like Shishupal, who always abused Lord Krishna, could find supreme position, there should be no doubt for gopis who had such a profound passion for Lord. So gopis arrived and gathered around Lord Krishna to test their devotion and enhance the honor of Kamadev. Krishna said to them, O gopis, the pure ones, 
it is not fit for you to stay here at the, this hour of night. Go and serve your husband. Your duties must be first to your husband's children and cows. They will be waiting for you eagerly. Go and console them. You can gain me by hearing, reciting, seeing. You need not sit here. Go to your home. Gopis, however, said, Govind, we have come to you leaving all the mundane lusts behind. Now going back is like running our lives. It is the greatest misfortune if someone returns to mundane affairs even after being at your feet. These words that reflected divine feelings of gopis pleased Lord. He began to enjoy their company. But a feeling of ego began to creep in the minds of gopis because of Lord's closeness. They began to assume themselves as highly fortunate. To remove their ego, Lord disappeared right among them. Pitiable condition of gopis in Krishna's absence. After the disappearance of Krishna, gopis were perplexed. Their hearts burned with the desire. They had dedicated their entire selves in the feet of Lord. They were entirely merged in the love of Krishna. Thus driven by passion, gopis began to search Lord Krishna. They asked trees, creepers and vegetation for the whereabouts of their beloved. They then spotted his footprints at one place. Footprints of Radha were also there. Indeed, he would have carried her, that great fortune one, on his shoulders, they thought. Lord had indeed, after disappearing from amidst gopis, taken Radha to an isolated place. She had then began to think herself superior to other gopis. So at one place she said, O oh Lord, I cannot walk now. My tender feet are tired. Kindly carry me on your shoulders to wherever you wish. At her request, Lord Krishna agreed to carry her on his shoulder. But as soon as she proceeded to ride, Lord disappeared from there also. Now Radha began to cry and wail and fainted. At the same time, other gopis also reached there and found Radha lying unconscious on the ground. All of them, including Radha, then returned to the bank of Yamuna and began to wait for Krishna's appearance. Reappearance of Lord Krishna among gopis. When the beloved gopis burst into tears, Krishna's patience gave way. His heart melted at their condition and he appeared amidst them. A sweet smile played on his beautiful face. He wore a garland of fresh white jayanti flowers and yellow clothes. His beauty could have moved even Kamadev, seeing their beloved Kana once again amidst them. Gopis got a new lease of life. All of them began to embrace Lord Krishna and thus quench the fire of separation that was burning their bodies. Thereafter, along with the beauties of Raj, Lord Krishna came to the banks of Yamuna. Gopis put their queries before him for solution. Lord Krishna said, O beloved Gopis, I do not reciprocate to the desire of my beloved ones for physical love. Because of it, their consciousness remains always engrossed in me. Hence I take to hiding even after meeting so that you could feel complete imbibement in me. Maharas. From the words of Lord Krishna, gopis forgot the pains of separation. From the closeness of their beloved, their lives were successful now. With those gopis, Lord Krishna started Maharas on the pious banks of river Yamunam. All the gods gathered in sky to witness that divine festival. Gopis even were even more fortunate than Lakshmi. But even amidst crowds of gopis who were eager to devote their everything to him, Lord Krishna completely refrained from desire, feelings and even actions. Thus Lord Krishna defeated even Kamadev and removed his ego. Salvation of Sudarshan and Shankar Parashat says, Once on the occasion of Shivaratri, Nanda 
Baba and all other Gopas drove their carts with families and reached Ambikavana on a pilgrim tour. There they took bath in the river Saraswati and with devotion worshipped Lord Shiva and Parvati. They also observed day long fast and dedicated and decided to pass their night on the bank of Saraswati. But a huge python inhabited that place. During the night, the python emerged and caught hold of Nanda's leg. Nanda Baba cried loudly. All the gopas gathered around him. He cried again, Kanaya, this snake is all set to strangulate me, save me. Lord Krishna touched the python with his feet and instantaneously the python vanished. In its place appeared a divine looking human being. He said, O Lord, I was a Vidyadhar named Sudarshan. I was so much obsessed with my beauty, youth, luxury and comfort that I used to insult others. One day I had derived at the ugly appearance of sage Angirasa. So indignantly he caused me to become a python. But pleased by my realization of mistake, he had told that when God himself would touch me, I would regain my original appearance. Thereafter, Sudarshan went round the god, worshipped him, and with his permission departed to his abode. On another occasion, Lord Krishna arrived in Vrindavana during Vasant Ritu. There he took part in Vasantik Ras with the gopis. During Ras itself, a demon Shankachar tried to escape away, kidnapping some of the gopis. A stampede resulted among gopis. Hear their noise and hearing, Lord Krishna ran after the demon, carrying a huge sal tree in his hand. In no time he overtook the demon and killed him by just one blow. He picked up the gem from the demon's head and handed it to Balarama. Salvation of Arishta Shur. Once Kansa sent a demon Arishta Shur to Vrindavan. The demon arrived there in a bull's guise. That huge bull came to Vrindavan and began to terrorize the people with his loud song. Seeing the bull, Balarama said to Krishna, Kanaya, I have never seen such a huge bull before. All the people began to cry for help. Lord Krishna consoled them and challenged the bull demon. O oh fool, why are you terrorizing these cows and cowherds? I am going to shatter your ego. The challenge from Krishna pinched the demon. Tapping his hooves angrily, the demon attacked God. He wished to gore him, but Krishna held his horns and pushed him back. Then kicking the demon, Krishna killed him in no time. Kansa sends Akrura. After the killing of Arishtasur, Devar Shri Narada visited Kansa and asked, O oh Kansa, the girl who had slipped from your hand was in fact the daughter of Yashoda. Krishna and Balarama, who are staying in Vrindavan, are in fact the sons of Devaki and Rohini respectively. Because of your fear, Vasudev has kept them under the supervision of his friend Nanda. Those two boys have killed the demon sent by you. Hearing these words, Kamsa shook with anger and put the Vasudev and Devaki in prison again. Thereafter, he called his minister Akrura and asked him to set out at once for Gokul. He said to Akrura, Akrura ji, you are an old friend and well-wisher of mine. Go to Gokul and bring the sons of Vasudev who are staying at Nanda's home. Invite them to visit Mathura to witness the festivities of Dhanush Yagya. Akrukra understood Kansa's intention but feared that if he refused, the demon would kill them. So he decided to visit Gokul and also have the opportunity of seeing God. He was feeling overwhelmed by the mere thought of it. Next day he set out on a grand 
chariot to meet his supreme lord in gopal meditating in the feet of lord akrura was heading towards vrindavan he was feeling himself as the most fortunate one for he was sure to have a sight of lord thus obsessed with many kinds of devotional feeling akrura alighted from the chariot at the border of vrindavan and started walking he found it unjust to ride a chariot on the land of vrindavan where lord krishna treaded by the time he reached vrindavan lord krishna and balrama had returned home after grazing their cattle seeing them akrura fell at their feet both the brothers raised akrura and dressed him as chacha and escorted him into the house akrura was given a warm welcome and treatment there after the dinner they assembled in nanda's drawing room nanda inquired about the reason of his sudden arrival akrura said kansa is organizing a wrestling competition in mathura he has invited all the big and small kings to the competition he has invited you with krishna and balrama as well beautiful mathura is worth seeing gulibal nanda felt pleased by akrura talking and said king kansa has shown a great honor to me he has sent invitation only to other kings but has sent his manage minister to call me and a golden chariot for my kids so it was announced in gokul that all the people would go to mathura the next day and witness the festivities there departure of krishna and balrama for mathura when the gopis heard about krishna leaving gokul to visit mathura they began to wail and cry they were getting so much restless by the news that they felt their lives would end before the sunrise they started imprecating fate that it has no kindness first it provided them with a closer contact with their beloved kanaiya now it was causing a long separation from him some of gopi gopis even begged for death they felt it better than living without kanaiya all the gopis kept on crying and wailing night long mother yashoda awoke early in the morning next day she churned out butter and adding misri she took it to krishna to feed him but there she found that both krishna and balrama were getting ready to set out for mathura they held mother's feet and said pardon us o mother we are going to mathura these words disturbed yashoda she ran and fell at akrura's feet and said i am your slave o akrura please do not take my beloved sons to mathura they are inseparable from my heart why kansa has summoned them to mathura o akrura go and tell him to take everything from us but spare our son we are also ready to live in jail but cannot lose our beloved son akrura consoled yashoda bhavi don't worry these two brothers are going to mathura to witness the festivities there and will return soon to comfort your heart yashoda said akrura ji mathura is a town of gold and both of my sons are too young yet to be needed there for any reason touching the feet of nanda and yashoda both the brothers said father mother we will definitely return presently we wish to see the grandeur of mathura Meanwhile all the gopis and gopas had gathered there crying and wailing the gopis said you are very cruel o oh, akrura who named you as akrura you have come here to less great our heart second gopi said no friend it is not a fault of akrura our complaints are with sham sundar we left everything our husbands children our home and dedicated our entire selves to in your service and now you are deserting us so ruthlessly we have no support for our life except you o oh, madhusudan saying this all the gopis burst into tears again all the gopis including three dama surrounded the chariot and said o oh, krishna 
we had not even dreamt that you would desert us so ruthlessly o kanaya we have seen with our eyes that even indra varuna shanakadi and brahma bow before you but we have never regarded you as god we regarded you as our friend are you angry with us oh my childhood friend kanaya we request you we will never abuse you in future if you were intending to go why did you then save us from the infernal forest fire why did you save from the deluging rains we cannot live without you tell us o oh benevolent friend when will you return lord krishna consoled them all and took many of them with him the chariot began to move as long as the flag of chariot remained visible people kept on crying and wailing even the eyes of akrura filled with tears lord asked him kaka why are you weeping akrura replied o oh lord kansa is the great sinner i feel he will try to torment you by all means so my heart says that i should take you back to vrindavan because if kansa did any harm to you their spirits will curse me forever